The island of Sodor is a great place. It has so many friendships, trust, honor, and love. That's what everyone says about it. You see the people and the steam engines and diesels alike bond together, almost like a family, if you will. Great stories, legends, and tales are always told. This island holds many secrets. Some have been solved and others have remained hidden. It so happens. But every now and then, a new story emerges, told from one storyteller to another. It turns out that there are many. Most of these stories are often told on Halloween by engines large and small, even the adults and the children. Some ghost stories can give us a fright, while others can give us hellish nightmares in the worst ways possible that the human mind can't even describe. Many ghost stories are told and have intrigued a lot of enthusiasts are here on the island. Some are dated way back, long before Thomas or Edward or any of the other engines that came onto Sodor. However, though, there are some stories that are kept away and let to be forgotten. That may happen with the case of my own. My name is Timothy, number zero, the first prototype of the ER Class II locomotives. I was one of the batch of many. However, though, my kind was not yet ready to be put into service. So I was the only one built, and my class was said to dominate. I was put up on trials and several occasions to see how I would go and how would the other classes go with me. So many good things were supposed to happen in my life, but unfortunately it turned out not to be. I was the first of my kind built, but many people and the future generations don't even know that. All they think of is Thomas, for he's the number one. But I was intentionally the first to lead the way for my kind. During my life, I was not treated the right way. I was brought up with disrespect, looked upon down as a useless piece of scrap iron. No matter how hard I worked my six wheels off, no matter how much fire and energy and smoke that burned within me, I wasn't worthy enough. Even though my crew did everything they could, it just didn't seem to happen right. Deep down in the back of my mind, I just wanted to leave. I wanted to go elsewhere. I wanted to have a different type of life. My luck was changed, and I ended up did go and work into Sodor. But because I was a prototype and used so many times, my parts were so worn, I was very expensive. During my short time on the island of Sodor, I worked with a small fleet of engines. They were the only friends I ever had. They were kind, very well upbringing, and they respected me. Even though these were the only friends I had in my life, I was lonely. I didn't have any happiness, no joy, and no love. Even though I kept on smiling to everybody that I came across, hauling passengers and freight, I just didn't have the energy within me. And my crew were unaware of it. Nobody could understand what was going in my mind because they couldn't see through it. No one would see what would become of me. My future was in my own hands. Deep depression sunk into me. Around the timing I was treated so badly, just before the outbreak of World War I came along in 1914. Even though I did like living on Sodor, and work on this small branch line with a small fleet of locos, I just didn't have it in me anymore. This was all mainly because 
I was treated with disrespect and scouted by, by the old controller, who didn't know how to run a railway. All he was into was in money and greed, and he took crew members to make them look like professionals who didn't know how to drive an engine properly. None of the other locomotives or myself could do anything to stop him. We had to carry out his orders. And if we were late or didn't go in time, we would see the harshest punishments of all. I got the worst end of it mostly because I was the oldest. Around the timing of my scrapping was to come, I wanted revenge. I wanted to fulfill my destiny. On the night when I took my final train, it was supposed to take from the Sodor to the Midlands. My plan was set in motion. I knew what I was going to do, even though it would cost me big time. The old controller was aboard, but unfortunately, along with other innocent souls, they had nothing to do with it. But I knew they would have to share his fate. I, along with my small train and passengers aboard, were all alone in the wilderness. I took my opportunity and I ran over a cliff and took everybody with me, including my own crew and the passengers, along with the controller who made my life a living hell. It has been years since it happened, but still clings to me. The memories of what I went through, the negative emotions, the disrespect, the young love, and everything that I wanted in my life did not come. And so my pain and torture and unsolo and haunting on us began. And come to think of it, that's where the fun really began. <laughs> Steam engines on the big and small light feared me, including the people who saw me. Even the little children even caught a glimpse of who I was. They all became scared of me. They feared me, and they would all come screaming out. I was more than happy to do this. This was fun. This is what I loved. <laughs> the island of Sodor's popularity continued to grow, even after the demise of the original branch line that I worked on went into bankruptcy. And then many years later, it became Thomas's branch line. I saw it happen. I was there. But no one even noticed it. Not even that little blue tank engine knew. For so many decades, I continued on haunting the island of Sodor. So many witnesses saw me, mostly at night or in bad pouring rain. No one could understand my pain and torture of what I went through. Very few knew about my story. It was rarely told, for it was kept to remain hidden and not known to anybody else. But for those who did remember me, they will never, ever leave me or my memory. The suffering and native emotions, they're still there, lurking within me. My wrath is still felt, and even to this day, it's still there. I'm mostly seen on the anniversary of my death, on the same night, the same day, the same month, and the same year. They think that the island of Soto is safe. I'll think again. It's not. I'm still there, and I have not yet found my peace. There is none. There is none within me left. I am just a monster. A ghost 
most monster train who enjoys making others suffer. <laughs> few of the steam engines on that railway have seen what I look like. And they've rarely talked about it. However, Thomas was the only one who seemed to not even remember who I was. We rarely saw one another and rarely spoke. He has no idea that I saw the death and the demise of my kind. All of my brothers and sisters were all sent to the scrap heap. But Thomas somehow survived. Why? How could he? Why was he the only one to survive? He may have survived the scrap heap, but he will not survive me. I know you're out there still, brother. But soon your fate will come. And it will happen on the date of my demise as I take you with me to hell, plunging into eternal darkness, hearing you shriek out like a lost soul. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,